Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're gonna talk about compression ratios of compressors. So the definition of a compression ratio is a ratio between two pressures in the compressor. The numerator is the absolute discharge pressure and I'll talk about what absolute means in just a minute. And the denominator is the absolute suction pressure. So it's a comparison of those two pressures, and once they're in what's called the absolute units, you can divide and get your ratio, and you're gonna express that as something to one. The challenge is finding the absolute uh, pressure, especially when you're working with vacuum pressures. So I'm gonna talk about how we convert from vacuum pressures and gauge pressures to absolute pressures, and then we'll take a look at an example of actually calculating the compression ratio. What I've drawn here is a line to represent the abs total absence of pressure or a perfect vacuum, and then this line represents atmospheric pressure at sea level. Let's take a look at how our pressure units are in relation to those two key pressures. For PSIA, which means pounds per square inch absolute, the scale starts with a total absence of pressure. So in a perfect vacuum, that's where it starts at zero. At atmospheric pressure, we're going to have an absolute pressure of 14.7 PSI. If we were to take a look at a gauge, the PSIG starts at zero at atmospheric pressure and anything less than atmospheric pressure will measure as inches mercury vacuum. And it will go from zero to 29.921. As the pressure decreases or the vacuum increases, our numbers go from zero to 29.921. And for PSIG, we start zero here and continue. Hopefully you can see the relationship between PSIA and PSIG. PSIA will always be 14.7 greater than PSIG. So if you're given a pressure in PSIG on your gauge, what you need to do is add 14.7 to get the pressure in absolute. So for example, if I had 220 PSIG, I would add 14.7 to that and I would get 234.7 PSIA. Once I've changed my gauge pressure to absolute, I can then use it in my formula for calculating compression ratio. If you get a pressure as a vacuum pressure, inches mercury vacuum, it's more difficult to convert that to PSIA. You can do it on your calculator. I mean, there's different, you can just Google it and, and your calculator will do it for you. But if you're interested in knowing how it's done, I'm gonna show you the method that I use. If you look elsewhere, you're gonna see other methods, but this is how I like to convert. Let's do an example of 20 inches mercury vacuum. That's about two thirds of the way down from atmospheric pressure or one third of the way up from perfect vacuum. And what I wanna know is what is that equivalent to as pounds per square inch absolute. Now these, I can't simply add or subtract something from that value. I can't set it up as a direct proportion. I can work with another pressure unit, which is inches mercury column. So I'm gonna write inches mercury column right here. It's like barometric pressure. And in a total absence of pressure, it will be zero. And it goes to 29.921. So it's the opposite of the vacuum scale. Because it's zero starts at the same place as PSIA and it increases as we get higher pressure, then we can set up a direct proportion between those two measurements. What I need to do is convert 20 inches mercury vacuum, inches mercury column, first of all, and then I'm gonna use proportion to convert it to PSIA. So if I'm down 20 from zero to 20, that's a distance of 20 from the top, I'm gonna to be down a distance of 20 from this top. 
So if I take away, if I subtract 20 from 29.921, I will get 9.921 inches mercury column. These are equivalent. Now in order to convert from 9.921 inches mercury column to PSIA, I'm simply going to set up a direct proportion. Let me show you how. I'm going to take 9.921 over 29.921. So the portion or the ratio of this to the total at atmospheric pressure will be equivalent to this value, which I can call X or a question mark, to the total, which is 14.7. I'm going to change that to an X, and now I'm going to solve for X. In order to do that, I'm going to cross multiply. So I'm going to have 29.921 times X will equal that product of that diagonal. And then in order to solve for X, I'm going to divide by 29.921. What I do to this side, I must do to this side as well. So the 29.921 will cancel here. And now I just punch this into my calculator to get my value for PSIA. When I do the calculation, I get 4.874 pounds per square inch absolute. So that method will work whenever you have a vacuum pressure and you need to change it to PSIA. Take the intermediate step of changing it to inches mercury column and then use proportion to find PSIA. Now that we know how to change both gauge pressure and inches mercury vacuum pressure to PSIA, we can calculate compression ratio. So let's take a look at an example. So our question says the suction pressure of a compressor is 10 inches mercury vacuum. The condensing pressure or the discharge pressure is 150 PSIG. What is the compression ratio? So we have two pressure units that we need to convert. We need to convert 150 PSIG to PSIA and the way that we're going to do that, so that's our discharge pressure. Is we're going to take 150, we're going to add 14.7, which is equal to 164.7 PSIA. Now the suction pressure. is 10 inches mercury vacuum. So what I'm going to do is convert that to inches mercury column first. Inches mercury column is found by taking 29.921, subtracting the 10, and we get 19.921 inches mercury column. I can now set this up in a direct proportion to find PSIA. So 19.921 over 29.921 will equal X over 14.7. I'm going to multiply those two numbers and divide by this. That's my little shortcut. When I do the calculation, I get a value of 9.787 PSIA. Now that I have both pressures in absolute units and the same units, I can find my compression ratio. So my compression ratio will be equal to the discharge pressure of 164.7 PSIA divided by the suction pressure 9.787 PSIA. I'm going to divide 164.7 by 9.787 and I get a value of 16.8 to 1 or 16.8 to 1. So the compression ratio of this particular compressor will be 16.8 to 1. The key in calculating the compression ratio is having both the discharge pressure and the suction pressure in PSI absolute.